The topics we discuss are many. No story too bold to talk about. Strictly our own opinions. But they are opinions from people like you. Welcome Welcome to to the the Naked Naked Podcast. Podcast. I'm looking for a mind at work. Hey, it's Keelan. Don't shriek me, it's Alan. Welcome to the Badlands. It's Ethan. Well, you don't need interdimensional cable, but you do need Hulu. It's Norma. What? We don't have to sign up for interdimensional cable? (laughs) I'm down. What do I sign up? Uh, No, you don't need interdimensional cable, but you do need Hulu to watch Solar Opposites. Have you guys watched it yet? Yeah, we well at least we haven't finished it, but we're halfway through. It's different. I like it. I only heard about it this past weekend, and I love it. Like it's 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 completely different than Rick and Morty, but I like the fact that it's different with that same animation. It still has like a same vibe, but they're not trying too hard to be Rick and Morty, which is what I like about it. Yeah, it does feel like it's more of Justin Rowland instead of you know. Rick and Morty, like, you get his vibe that it's him, but you don't get it, like, like he's not trying to be Rick and Morty. But, I don't know, I'm really interested interested to see if there's going to be a uh, crossover episode. I have theories. Do you guys have That'd theories? That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> so, Alan and I were talking about this earlier, and we have a couple of theories, but... What do you guys think? How do you guys think it would cross over, if it could? Well, the easiest way for Rick and Morty would be, uh, like, another dimension. So, like, this is one of the dimensions that Rick's dead or something. So, instead of Rick, instead of Rick bringing aliens to the Earth, they come and blah, 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 you know. That's literally what I thought, too. My, like, entire thought is uh, Rick portals into that house thinking it's his house and instead a Korvac and Terry like crashed rebuilt the house and killed everyone inside it and Rick just has a panic attack like what the fuck you killed you killed my original daughter you son of a bitch (laughs) (laughs) and then he murders all of them and destroys their universe yeah (laughs) (laughs) but what if they destroy him dun 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 so that was a Another one of my theories, Korvac has a stupid gun. Corvo. Corvo. Sorry. Cor- Corvo? Corvo. Sorry, I, I mispronounced yeah, his Corvo. name. Corvo. Corvo has a stupid gun. What if stupid Rick is from that same universe? And Corvo just <laughs> shot That can him. make sense. <laughs> That'd be funny. I forgot my theory. What was my theory? Um... Mr. Mr. Poopy Butthole? I don't know. No, remember. it wasn't Mr. Poopy Butthole. Okay, speaking of Mr. Poopy Butthole, people were saying <laughs> that Mr. That Fun Bucket is the show's Mr. Poopy Butthole, but Fun Bucket was a dick. Yeah, he was. Fun Bucket was a piece of shit that didn't last more than one episode. Yeah. Mr. Poopy Butthole is timeless. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez, Rick. Oh, 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 I remember, I remember. So, your theory was they're part of interdimensional cable. Oh, yes. But plot twist, they don't know that they're part of interdimensional cable. They are actually, um, it's like a Truman Show mm-hmm. theory, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. That'd be awesome. I mean, it makes sense. Trademark, Naked Pod. <laughs> <laughs> we will sue you, Dan Harmon. <laughs> but we love you. For, Please send us For what you shit. did to the last season of Community, we will sue you. Oh. Sponsor us. <laughs> Sponsor us. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize it was on Community. I've never seen Community. Community is like where he got, where he's made his name. Hmm. Which one's Dan Harmon? Dan Harmon is the creator of Community. He's the creator and showrunner. He's not the bald one? Yeah. yeah. He's the chunky bald guy. Mm-hmm. Dude, I love him. He is amazing. I know him from like so many different shows because he always pops up everywhere. Yeah. Hmm. One place I haven't seen him pop up is Hamilton. It's a Broadway production, right? It's not like a movie. No, this will be the first time it's come out on video. Um, So yeah, it's a Broadway musical that came out back in 2015, 2016. And it was just a smash hit. 
I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're rapping about the founding fathers, and it's so cool. I've never seen <laughs> Hamilton. They rap in this? Yeah. So have you never it's listened to Hamilton? You, you can't watch Hamilton um, unless you, you go see it on like Broadway or you saw it yeah. when it, was, it came to town, um, which I remember when it was announced, and you had to have been a season member for at least two years prior in order to just to get tickets oh my goodness. to go see the show. And they were hella oh expensive too. I think like nosebleed seats were like four hundred dollars. Fuck that. Ridiculous. Our tickets for Incubus were like half that price. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for the first time, Disney's going to bring it to Disney Plus. Yay. With the OBC and I'm so fucking excited. I wonder where they're gonna put it on Disney D V D and VHS. <laughs> Call that to the '90s kids. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I I like that Disney's putting this out on Disney Plus, and I think it's good. And I think they announced that it's coming out earlier than anticipated, right? Well, yeah, they need a little cash flow, and they need to get some membership, so <laughs> they're probably pushing it. There's nothing on Disney Plus right now. Yeah, yeah, I haven't been on Disney Plus in a couple weeks. I fell asleep to Ratatouille the other night. It's <laughs> a great movie. I love that movie. You want to watch, um, what is it, Onward? Onward. <laughs> For like the right. 800th time. So, it, yeah. So, sidebar real quick. We got HBO just recently and Norma signed us up. And today I watched Storks with Eros and I forgot how much I loved that movie. <laughs> Sorry. I know, complete sidebar. But going back to Hamilton, I'm I'm excited to to actually watch it and to experience it without having to pay five hundred dollars or an arm and a leg or my firstborn child. Like that'd be nice. You know, I'm surprised that like a high school or something doesn't haven't done a rendition of it. They probably can. I don't think they can't just yet. They have to wait for the uh, the player the rights playwrights or. Mm-hmm. Well, Disney is notorious for either extending copyright laws or rebooting their IPOs so that no one can redo them. So I don't think anyone will be able to do a Hamilton take in a high school level at any time, unless if they're willing to pay the thousands of dollars. Or maybe Stop it'll... being a dick, Disney. <laughs> right? <laughs> or maybe it'll, it'll be an, an inspiration for the next young, young poetic writer and inspire you know a high school student to create something what no i just had an idea for one homeo and juliet <laughs> and julia <laughs> i'm pretty sure rapping shakespeare has been done well you know what they say if it's not shakespeare it's the bible <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing yeah it's a thing yes. yeah. mostly all of our literature is based on either shakespeare or the bible that's true I'm excited to see it, and yeah, I'm excited that the cast is getting the recognition that they that they deserve. Because I mean, so many people who love plays, like you, Helen, you love musicals, you love plays, you love theater, you're in theater yourself, and I'm I'm really excited to see that highlighted and be a little bit more on the forefront of traditional, I guess, media like film and TV and movies. Um, I'm I'm sure it will never replace the experience of actually sitting in person and seeing the play. But I mean, it's a it, from what I hear, it's a good story and it's relatable and kids love it. I mean, my nieces they love it and it's teaching them something. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Alexander Hamilton is actually a very influential figure in our past. I mean. He helped with the Federalist Papers. Mm -hmm. He helped with the first United States Bank. He actually oversaw us being in the green for the first time ever. And the only time (laughs) as a country. (laughs) Well, it's we're never gonna get there. (laughs) Goddamn China. No, yeah. I'm I'm just I'm super stoked. I don't really get to see as much theater as I'd like to. I think the last play I saw was actually um oh what was it called? Oh, Daddy Long Legs. Um, I had heard the song on Spotify before. The uh, the Secret of Happy- Happiness. Um, but I had never seen the show. And Northwest Vista on their You Can Watch Movie site 
they had different theater plays and Daddy Longlegs was one of them. And so I learned that it was a two person cast. <laughs> And it was it was pretty cool to watch. Um, so you do lose a little bit of magic on watching it on screen, but I think it's it's worth it just to be exposed to it. That's cool. What is Daddy Longlegs about? It is about an orphan who has an anonymous sponsor who actually uh, sends her to college, makes sure she continues to write because he read one of her essays. And the show is basically her narrating her experiences and sending letters to her sponsor. And then it's her sponsor reading her letters and kind of not responding to them, but reacting to them. Hmm. Um, and it's really, it's really interesting to, uh, to see that dynamic because spoiler, she thinks of him as a, an older gentleman and he's uh, a young man, roughly a few years older than her. Um, and so every time he's like, what do you mean I have gray hair? <laughs> it's funny. That's one thing that I'm kind of hoping comes out of the other side of this pandemic. I saw that everyone's like, let's bring drive-ins back. Or, let's bring like open air plays back or something, you know? Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, a lot of things, you know, are kind of on their way out, but there's a couple of things that, you know, I think people are being a little bit ingenious about with this pandemic. I saw a post earlier about this girl who really missed her friends. So they all met up in a Target parking lot and they in the morning and they had coffee sitting in their trunks because they all have, you know, mom cars and did the social <laughs> distancing thing. That's cute. <laughs> but I love the idea of a drive-in because I think our only one that's close to us is in New Braunfels, right? Yeah, the Stars and Stripes. Yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. The only option you have anywhere around here. And they've gone down to showing one movie half of the time instead of the double features. Well, I'm okay with that. The double features was a little much for me. I'm like, I'm tired. Let's go to bed. I know. <laughs> yeah, if they started the double features earlier, you know, like if you could start a movie at six, but all their movies started at like eight, nine o'clock when it got dark. I think that's where the problem is. Like if they were able to sort of build a... Um, a way to cover the screen or cover all the cars then it'd be perfect but then it'd get hot in there so there's a problem behind that wait why would they need to cover it oh because it's it would need to be dark yeah oh, okay yeah yeah you gotta have it yeah yeah i get you i get you <laughs> it took me a minute but i caught up <laughs> it's okay it's okay <laughs> you got there with uh, us speaking of getting caught up though I think I know a lot of Americans are really struggling right now financially and house democrats are wanting to push a second round of stimulus checks. I just, I don't think we're ready for more debt. I, I, I just, let's start opening the country up and getting the economy back rolling before we take on more debt. But we need to be careful about it because I know that uh, Dr. Fauci, he went to the Senate today to protest against opening up the country because he's, I mean, he's just as worried as all of us about incurring more deaths and more infections but i mean i i get where where you're coming from where we have to reach a sense of normalcy and try to kind of get the economy rolling again all i'm saying is i'm an adult i wear my mask when i go to into stores mm -hmm. i use hand sanitizer i wash my hands i wear what a, I, i'm complying with you you got to give me something yeah if you want me to keep doing things that you're asking you got to start doing some things people are asking for there has to be a compromise <laughs> printing more money is not going to do anything and, and, and that comes back to a major issue that the united states is suffering from right now is we when you divert it's called diversifying your assets for a reason mm -hmm. where we sold off our manufacturing our producing options so right now it's like we're riding the tech wave we Bet, we bet the house on technology. And one pandemic, most technology kind of shuts down. People aren't leaving the house. They don't need all this stuff. There's certain technologies they need, but most of them they don't. Mm -hmm. So us not having a base of making something we can sell. The basic principle of economics is I make something, I sell. I have a service, I sell it. Yeah. Right? And... We don't right. have that. I agree. And I don't think that, like, the bill 
that they're the Democrats are proposing is a little bit much. Like I get that people are still struggling. I get that it's really hard right now. And you know, I get that a lot of people living paycheck to paycheck are really in the hole. But I mean, doing another stimulus check round to me, while it would be nice, like I just it's not necessary at the amount that they're doing and i mean honestly like should we even be revisiting this discussion so early yeah i mean there's people are sorry there's people who have um not even received their stimulus check from the first round yet that's exactly what i was gonna say (laughs) no i i like the idea of trying to take care of the american people but the fact that they're already starting to open up places people are already starting to go back to work um and those who weren't at work they were eligible for unemployment like i'm not gonna lie having those unemployment checks was amazing i actually have a savings account now but i'm not trying to go out and blow money just because everything's open or just because i have it Mm -hmm. so i think adding another check to the people isn't really the wisest idea so i i don't feel comfortable with democrats crafting a stimulus bill if you're going to make a stimulus bill any American citizen over 18 gets $1,200, no questions asked, nothing. Just send it out. You have their tax information. D- don't put strings attached. Don't try to give money to the Kennedy Center again. Don't try to give money over here, money over there. If you're going to stimulate the American people, strictly do that. Yeah, some of some of the stuff that they're trying, they've been trying to sneak into these bills and push. They own it favors New York and California which are Democrat-controlled areas. The rest of the country shouldn't have to pick up the slack because Democrats spend their money in their own... They spent too much of their money and weren't prepared for anything. You know, I agree with you there. I mean, why the fuck should the money just go to New York and California? And if they're actually going to send people money, it should be to everyone who pays taxes or any just you know anyone above the age of 18 just as you said but it has to go to them it can't be someone in college who's like 20 doesn't pay taxes and that money goes to their parents who then refuses to give it to them like that that's just not cool no if you're gonna to me if you're gonna stimulate the economy you do that by putting money in people's hands that they can spend Mm -hmm. so who's gonna be more likely to go blow the twelve hundred dollars right away People under the age of 30. Mm-hmm. Honestly, they have bills. They have car repairs. They have something they Us. could. <laughs> you know, you think anyone under 30, they say, I could spend a grand today to better my life. Mm-hmm. So you take, if you're over 18 and you're a U.S. citizen, you get $1,200 in your account. No questions asked, no strings attached. Th- that's how you stimulate the economy. Doing all these major bailouts and all this corporate bullshit is not going to stimulate the economy. But wasn't that kind of like the Republican side of it, though, of like wanting um, additional funds for a corporation so they wouldn't lay off their workers? So No. No. Okay. So because I our company, our personal company has been dealing with the Paycheck Protection Program. So we didn't get we filed with. Okay. So when it went live, right? We filed within five minutes of it going live. We didn't get funding until the second go around of that second funding. We didn't get any help. And that's because most major corporations have a legal team on staff ready to roll. You were able to file first. Was it like Ruth Chris that like was bullied into giving it back? (laughs) Well, they said that they would. They were bullied, though. They they said that they wanted to yeah, give it back. I, I think yeah, it, after they were I think bullied. it was Shake Shack <laughs> that kind of were like, oh, we're giving ours back, and then you know threw shade on everybody who wasn't. But again, it's mm-hmm. when I think of econ- our economy, I think our our foundation and restaurants and consumables shouldn't be the foundation of our economy. Manufacturing and production should be the man or the foundation, and we don't have that. And so giving money to these major restaurants and all these big corporations is not helping our manufacturing and producing of stuff. I agree with you there. Earlier this week, Elon Musk is suing the city that his Tesla uh, manufacturing plant is at. Alamino. Because the city, yeah, Alamino, they won't let him open. No, no, it's not the city, it's the county. So the mayor of the city and the governor, Newsom, they both okayed him opening the plant. 
the county health official mm -hmm. is the one blocking him opening the plant. So he did it in defiance. And he was on the production line. Speaking of Elon Musk, how do you pronounce his kid's last uh, first name or the one you tried to name? I have heard <laughs> two ways. The first one was really complex, was Ash Archangel. Yeah, a Ash is his name. That's what Elon Musk said on Joe Rogan's podcast. The other one figured out that that could also be pronounced as Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that yeah. one, and I was just like... What? Yeah. So because <laughs> no, but yeah, ashes. Yeah. So one. because of that, he went on Joe Rogan's, and he said that. So Grimes picked the fir his first name, which is Ash, and then he got to pick his second the the A twelve. That's for the Archangel Twelve project, the former CIA Blackhawk plant or uh, mm -hmm. the supersonic jet. He's like it was the best. <laughs> best ship or best plane ever designed so i had to honor it somehow <laughs> like god damn guy you're a nerd did they <laughs> did, did they let him do that they said no because no characters right yeah special characters well i mean he's elon musk i think he's gonna do what he wants honestly anyone that tries to tell you you can't name your child somewhere should just fuck off I think a couple in Sweden a couple years ago tried to name their kid, like, a number. Like, not spell out, like, the word two, but it's actually, like, the number. I think it was, like, four. and But just the number four was their name, and their courts were like, no, don't be dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stupid. Like, that's dumb. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I don't know. It always comes down. I guess when he becomes an adult, he'll choose like, what I'm he wants. I'm sorry. I thought that's America. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I mean, Nintendo might not be choosing what they want here soon. I heard there is a hostile takeover in the works. So, other than the hostile takeover, a lot of really useful information was released over last week, over a Nintendo hack. All the designs from the Nintendo 64 all the way through the Wii U, programming codes... Uh, code names for every project, baseline source code for any video game, as well as um, it, it's something called an emulator. Uh, for any of my techie friends or anyone who listens, they know what that is. But basically what an emulator is, it's think of um, like you're trying to play a, compu a, a game on your computer, but your computer can't handle it or, or, or it's just not programmed for it. You use an emulator to pretend to be a different uh, device to be able to play that. Like when I downloaded a Nintendo 64 emulator on my laptop so that I could play Zelda or Karina of Time. Yes, that's exactly it. Well, one day she'll finish that a game. A lot. <laughs> one day. <laughs> I'll help you. She has the game book. It's so cute. You just what she flips the page. You know how there's like four or five cells per page, you know, so yeah. steps. Yeah. She'll read the first one. And then she'll attempt it a couple of times and she'll reread it again and then attempt it and then go to the next stage, read it, attempt it, read it, attempt it, go to the next one, read it, attempt it. It's like, oh my God, this is taking so long. He hates when I play video games. <laughs> it's a quest game. You're supposed to figure it out yourself. <coughs> I have the same problem with it. We have the same problem with Edos where he wants for us to tell him how to solve things. We're like, no. So Fair that's enough. that's the rule of the law right here. <laughs> you have to beat the game first, then you can go back with a guide and try to get a hundred percent. Exactly. That's exactly, what, Ethan. That's what I'm trying beat to do. Beat the game first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to Nintendo. So what are they planning to do with these hacks, these plans? So the um custom emulator and the ROM community, the uh, read only memory. That's what ROM stands for, ROM. Oh. They're ecstatic over all this information because it's it's information we never had. It answers so many questions about everything, about how to properly build the emulators, how to get everything working, how the how the games were built in a certain way, and it describes everything and it's and it's like pure glory. Like everyone, I'm everyone like, is no, leave it. it to Nintendo. Like if anybody <laughs> tries to attempt another Zelda, I will fucking lose my mind. No, I got goosebumps just but, talking about. No, I seen the one guy who's remastered Zelda, and it is beautiful. Oh, the Unreal Four, the Ocarina yeah. of yes. Time. 
Yeah. Yes. He's Unreal Engine. It looks amazing. It looks really but good. He did say that he's never gonna like release it. He did it as a project to himself. Oh yeah. I, I remember seeing that. Fair yeah. but like, boo. He would never be able to release it. Yeah. But I mean that's they wanna protect their IPO. They wanna protect their knowledge and their their their, their property. And I and I agree with that. And a lot of the people who are a part of these communities are reaching out to their, you know, part-time developers or what have you, just just people who took this up as a hobby, asking them to use the official documentation. And they've all said, we don't want to use any of this because we want our projects to be official and we don't want Nintendo to come back at us and take everything yeah. down. And I mean, I get where they're coming from. I mean, Disney would do the same thing if someone made anything with any so, of their IPOs. So straight up, did you see what happened with the May the 4th tweet? I didn't. I didn't even pay attention to May 4th so, and May 5th. So May the 4th, uh, Disney put up a legal tweet that said, anyone using hashtag May the 4th be with you, uh, the hashtag, your tweet is now property of the Disney Corporation. What? What? Yeah. Disney, why can't we have any fun? So that they can reuse any of your tweets in their promotional advertisement or anything like that. They are for real becoming overlords. Well, that wraps up another great episode. Thanks for joining us. Find our memes and other great content on Twitter and Instagram at OG underscore the naked pod. Run over to our website, officialmillennials.com, and you'll find our wonderful blog, some notes for here and there from others and a link to our patreon where for one dollar you become a patron what do we get out of the one dollar patron all of alan's love and respect <laughs> i'm okay with that and as a long handwritten as... note no no handwritten note my handwriting shitty while you're on the internet definitely hop over to our twitch and mixer channels on twitch we're official millennials on mixer we're official mills we will be trying to do some streaming this summer, so definitely check that out. Maybe we'll have a live show, and I will be doing streaming Mondays and Thursdays over at uh, Mixer, P- Mixer and Twitch. My handle is PeachZ90. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you can find all of our episodes with a little extra fun mixed in. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks, everyone. This This is is an official Millennials production. production.